Welcome back to another brand new Victoria Events with Caleb Shaw. As you can tell, we are in a brand new studio. I'm super excited for this. Uh, before I go any further, I want to thank Steve. I want to thank Ethan. You guys busted your ends on this and everybody else that helped. Thank you. We're very grateful. This is an exciting time. Um, you don't often get new studios, and so I'm really excited. I appreciate their hard work, and, and I thank the community for watching the show to allow us to grow to this point to be able to have this cool studio. So thank you so much. Now, without further ado, I'm going to get going. I've got some great guests here that we want to talk about. forgot to say, welcome, Monday, August 2nd. Um, my friends, if you wouldn't mind, introduce yourselves and tell us a little bit about your organization. I am Tony Stitham. I'm the president of the Victoria County Volunteer Fire Department. Roger that. I'm Richard Castillo. I'm Victoria County Fire Marshal, also Fire Chief for the Victoria County Fire Department. Gotcha. Now, y'all have a little bit of an interesting dynamic organ I structure, structure, organizational structure. Maybe we'll go with that one. Explain to me kind of how y'all's um, deal works. Okay. What we are is uh, our office is established by the county as the Victoria County Fire Marshal's office, which is uh, investigations, inspections, we're law enforcement, fire, and uh, related offices. We do all the arson, fire inspections, everything gotcha. that so we're for example, like when that mosque burned down, so I'm just thinking yeah, of something like that. that would be in the city. We take everything in the you county. Know, you just said county, and then I went right yeah. to the city. I couldn't think of anything in we're the, in the at, county. And in the unincorporated areas of Victoria County. Gotcha. So okay. we cover every... All the outside. So, of say the a city. trailer burns down out in the county. We're and there. No, that's you all's job. To we're figure there. Out. We get a grass fire. We're there. We figure it out and assist. Uh, the other part of our thing is that we also, when we're our fire department side, is we're unique in that we have the Victoria County Regional Airport. We have our paid staff. We have five firefighters. We have 24-hour firefighters on at the station there at the airport. They respond to any airport emergency inside the airport, whether it's uh, a plane comes down. The other day we had a plane come down, bust a tire. Mm -hmm. So we blew it out. We get out there, make sure that it's okay. Any type of incident that happens with an aircraft, whether it's commercial, military, or general aviation, we will go out there. That is, that, those guys, that's all they do. So we're their chief. The other unique thing about our department is that we are a volunteer department, so we are a combination department. We fall under the uh, state uh, commission for firefighters, and we fall under the Texas Firefighters Fire Marshals Association that covers the volunteer side. And so with us having two sections, this is what we're here today. The paid side, we get covered for through tax money. Yes, sir. On the volunteer side, we actually raise funds just like the 11 other departments that we oversee. Each one of those departments in Victoria County, there's 11 volunteer fire departments. The fire marshal's office is their liaison, oversees operations if we need to do something, but they're independent. And each one of them goes out and fundraises to keep their money going in. Ours is a little different because part of our budget is to cover the truck expenses such as maintenance and fuel. But through the volunteer side, they provide buying the trucks, buying gear. Last year, we uh, what did we got? A little over $100,000. $100, for the And year. that wow. gear that we bought through the volunteer side, through raising donations, that goes into, we give it to the county. So it ends up being $100,000 that gives to the taxpayers mm -hmm. from what we collect. So it stays as the volunteers leave this stays for new volunteers coming in. Wow. So it's a, it's a unique. We respond everywhere in the county, just as the other departments. We also respond out of the county to the surrounding counties and either give them support on investigations, firefighting operations, and then we do education throughout the city and the county. Wow, well. So we're a busy bunch. Yeah, I was going to say, I probably have to have you tell me that about four more times <laughs> to, to fully track, but I will say, you know, we, we filmed a past episode of Me, Victoria, on at the fire department and they took us to their training to their training area and we repelled we put out a car fire we did some other things and, and i will tell you i have a whole new appreciation for you guys after that because it was about 96 degrees out there when we were doing that and you all's gear is hot you know i'm i'm a a texas ranger son and so i've always kind of 
gravitated towards the law enforcement military side of things where we get to carry cool guns and, mm -hmm. and you know stuff like that good lord that gear you all put on i was like we're gonna put this on right now and then go in that room where everything's on fire so it's 96 outside high humidity we're gonna put on all this gear and then go in where our fire is at even hotter and i about melted in there they were all they're standing by wondering if, like is he gonna make it because i was just poor i mean i gotta go stand by a fan in this room you know to, to cool down and so i just i walked out of there with the utmost admiration for you guys and appreciation and I, I don't think I would want to be a firefighter. I love all the things that you do, but I don't think I'm built to wear all that gear and just stand it by that heat like you guys do. Well, going into what you just said, our department actually has, we're a certified fire academy under the state for the commission or uh, career staff. We are also uh, have an academy through the State Fire, Man, fire Marshal Association for the volunteers. We run that same academy out in our department uh, Tony here was out of our last academy. Uh, we we're just uh, in the process of going into our second phase, which is Firefighter 2, for the academy we're doing this year. And what we do that, that part of our group to give back is that we do all of Victoria County volunteers, whoever wants to come for free, but you got to be a member of the volunteer fire departments in the county. And we also take the surrounding counties and we partner up. And so they end up getting a full, the same. Uh, class you went to here that's all the firefighters we actually teach that to the volunteers that provides them as you said the education and the experience so when they go into a fire they have more confidence they have the training to be able to to assist in the fire and actually do it because a lot of them don't have that opportunity so they learn on the job and it's dangerous mm -hmm. so we try to get that instilled to where they get that opportunity and with this opportunity a lot of them that join the fire department will then want to trans, you know, go over to the paid side. So all they have to do is uh, challenge the state test because they've already gone through the same academy. Other than ours is dragged out for a year, and these are like four months because they have to be on a schedule. Got so it. which makes it really neat. We, like I said, our department is very diverse, and we're lucky to have the commissioners and, and the judge that backs us up. That's awesome. Well, two things I want to ask, and, and one we'll get to at the end, is I want to find out how can people get with you guys about becoming fire, volunteer fire department, or volunteer firefighters and stuff. But before that, I, in case we run out of time, I know you all's big money maker, or what you all need for this, this site is, is you guys have a, a fundraiser coming up. And, and if you would, tell me about that and, and what it is and when it is and how we can support it and, and give me all the nuts and bolts and the good details of that thing for me. Okay, we're doing it Saturday. Okay. It will be out at the airport, and we have a station out there next to the fire marshal's office, which is next to the airport. Okay. Uh, we have raffle tickets, and right now there's 38 items on the raffle tickets, and All we're right. still getting items donated, so we'll just keep drawing. As long as we got prizes, we're going to keep drawing. Did the winner have to be there? No. Okay. We will call you. Gotcha. Gotcha. We'll call. And then we're also doing a barbecue plate, brisket, okay. sausage, German potatoes, green beans, all the trimmings. Uh, you had from, me a brisket, but it got even better as you kept going. But anyway, go ahead, go ahead. Uh, from 11 to 2, okay. plates are $10. Uh, and if you buy a pre-sale uh, ticket, they're guaranteed. You will get a plate. Outstanding. Until 2 o'clock. Outstanding. And this is really you all's lifeblood. I mean, this is right. this fundraiser is, is crucial to, to helping you guys. Kind of like what you alluded to earlier right. with the funds raised. You're able to buy that gear. You're able to buy just what you need to, to function and, and, and make it and be out there to answer those calls. So we've got a couple of trucks that are kind of on their last leg. They spend more time in the shop than they do out at the station. So we're hoping to get new new trucks. Gotcha. So gotcha. So that's that's the goal for coming from this goal. one. Now, you got any highlights on that? Uh, those raffle tickets? at any of those things that uh, you, you might just be able to steal some money out of me and get some money out of me with? Is there anything huh? that jumps out? Oh, well, let's see. We got some guns. I, well, I saw that. Um, I see got you got a, a, the the Smith and Wesson there, M and P. That's that that's a good nine millimeter right there. And yes, you. Well, you know what? I'll tell you what. Just why don't you just give all the guns? To, well, I'll take the guns, Tons. and then we'll we'll because uh, you can sell me the winning raffle tickets, right? Like I could pick I do which. Have one the, right here in my pocket. <laughs> that's that's the winner for all the gun one, right? Well, I'll get that one on the way out. Well, you got to buy six, so you the, get all of them. Okay, fair <laughs> enough. If, if you guarantee those are all the winners, I'll take all six. But but no, I'm joking aside. I do see some really, you know. There's all sorts. You've got a wide variety. Outlaw Pass, we've done an episode on them. They're great people out there. Okay. Tool sets. Yeah, you know, my wife's building a chicken coop right now. She could probably use this, this 
tool set and, and all this. And so, no, there, there's a spectacular list here of stuff, different firearms, different tools, different every, I mean, this is all U.S. flag kit. That That's awesome. You can get yeah. some pizza in there, Double Dave's. HEB gift cards, all sorts of great things, items in here. And so, uh, yeah, this is outstanding. Uh, wrapping up real quick, how can somebody, if they, if you captured their attention, if they want to become volunteer fire departments, what do they do? They can contact my office, the Victoria County Fire Marshal's office. We're located at the airport at Victoria Regional 25 North Hangar Drive. They can give me a call at our office, which is area code 361-579. 9103 and uh, get a hold of us. We'll do an interview with them. And uh, there is certain stages. We're just not going to take anybody. Uh, we do a background check on them. We do, um, we do actually some training at the beginning. They've got to meet certain requirements within six months to be able to make sure that when we start giving the gear that we spend this much money and getting them outfitted that they're going to be staying for a while. Right, yeah. It's a big commitment. Uh, most people don't realize, you know, volunteers are, are probably our greatest asset in, in firefighting in rural areas because these people get up in the middle of the night, go to work at six in the morning, and they fought a fire. Or they've come in on their weekend. And they uh, go to work. They go, they go straight to work, and they don't get paid for it. They do it out of just because their community service or, or just, you know, they're great people. And so what we want to do is we want to actually mentor them to get into that point. Uh, we have the 11, depending on what area of the county they live in, they'll be able to go into that district. We hook them up with that particular department. Our department takes a lot of the people that live within the city because there's no place for them to volunteer. So they can get up with us. Uh, the one thing we didn't tell you, our fundraiser is going to be out at the airport, Victoria Regional Airport, at 25 North Hangar Drive. So if you're coming down to the terminal, we're right there. You're going to see all the signs, and we'll be waiting for everybody. And how can they get with you early to get tickets, uh, or to get the raffle tickets? They can either call the same number, my okay. office, at uh, the Victoria County Fire Marshal's office, or they can get a hold of Tony. She'll give you a... 361 571-8664. Gotcha. Well, both of you all, thank you so much for doing this. Can I steal your paper real yep. quick? Yes, sir. Thank you so much for doing this. Thank, thank you, you all. for risking your lives out there to fight fires and investigate and do all that to serve your community. We're very grateful. Guys, one more time. Victoria County Fire Volunteer Fire Department raffle is going to be held this Saturday, August 7th at the, where was it again? Victoria Regional Airport. At Victoria Regional Airport. Tickets are $20 per ticket, or you can get six tickets for $100, so you can save there. Uh, make sure you do that. Support them. Let them know you're there. And win the cool stuff. If you win the game, come talk to me. We'll, we'll make a deal. Um, but get out and support them. Guys, thank you so much. And we will be right back with our next guest after a word from our sponsor. Since 1932... Walk and Volk has been closing mortgages and doing it the right way. And the reason why the Volks opened up a bank um, at the height of the Great Depression was because the bank needed to be opened at the height of the Great Depression. And it was good for the community at that time. A lot of the banks were going under. In order to keep that community sound and stable, it was something that they did. I think that that says something about who Wallach and Volk was 85 years ago. And the only way you get to continue to do it is if you consistently do it great. And we plan on doing this for another 85 years. All right, guys, we are back and another rock star guest, so we are excited. This is what I'm really excited for because I think that the, what this young lady is here for is, is something that we're lucky to have in our community. You know, a lot of communities don't get to have a zoo, so I think that's pretty spectacular that we do. And I have brought in the boss lady to come and tell us all about this. So if you wouldn't mind, young lady, please introduce yourself and, and give us all the, the cool details and exciting stuff about the zoo. Sure. So my name is Liz Jensen. I'm the executive director at the Texas Zoo. Texas Zoo is over 60 years old, believe it or not. And we are located in Riverside Park, which is beautiful. So we have a really nice location. Um, since I took over, I started six weeks after Harvey hit with five oh, feet of water but through that the was zoo. a ton of fun to come on <laughs> right then, huh? Nothing like jumping right into the deep end. Oh, my Lord. Literally was, on that one probably, huh? It was very overwhelming. But um, we have almost a new zoo. A lot of our buildings were rebuilt. And um, we've done a lot of improvements with our exhibits. We still have a long way to go. Um, but one of the things that we had this opportunity was we could kind of reinvent the zoo. Like, what is the Texas Zoo going to be? So 
Um, we really focused on getting people to interact with wildlife in one form or another because when you make those connections, that's when people start to feel inspired and ultimately we hope that they want to help protect you know, these mm -hmm. animals, because especially Texas wildlife, which is what we mainly focus on. And Texas is an amazing state. I'm not a Texan, but I think Texas has the most incredible biodiversity what in terms of gotta, species. I gotta ask now. Uh, well, you might not like the answer, but I am no, from I'm Connecticut. No, I'm curious, no, not especially now. <laughs> uh, yeah, talk to me here. But I'm from Connecticut. So. So, I, I've got no Connecticut biases. I, that works for me. <laughs> you're, you're making Texas look good, too, so you're, oh, you're, well, you're doing a good job. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Texas yes, has no, been sorry. very good to me. Didn't mean to interrupt, no, but no, you, no. you had my attention there, so <laughs> I, had to, I had to explore, but go ahead. So, but anyway, so we really wanted to focus on all of that, and so we created more space for classrooms, we created more event space, and we also created space to where people could do formal interactions. We were doing, at one point, this is pre-COVID, interactions with our lynx, with our bears, um, even with our jaguars at one point, and we have interactions with primates, and so those are really cool experiences, and people, when they come, they want to know what's behind the scenes. What's it like to mm -hmm. work with these animals, like the day in life of, of a zookeeper? And so those actions are, they've been really, really popular. And so we hope to be slowly inching back in that direction. Um, interestingly enough, our animals are under a, an interesting trial for COVID vaccines, because a lot of our animals can get COVID. So we're one of the few zoos in the US that I know of that are actually we're able to take advantage of that, so we're super excited about that. I was I was I was shocked to learn that that animals could could get COVID mm -hmm. also, and, and because I, I I was wondering why you know well, why do you have to wear a mask around the animals because I just yeah. didn't even that wasn't even on my radar, and so I I learned something there, and 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 that's exciting that that you guys you know have the opportunity to do mm -hmm. that and try to maybe return things back to normal a little bit yeah. in, inside of that. And, and I like the interactive thing that you talked mm -hmm. about. So, so you're telling me I can go up there and wrestle a bear? Is that what you're saying? You might not want to yeah, do that you know, I, but... Some days I get to take it, I'm all big and tough, and then, yeah, I probably <laughs> don't want to take on a bear. That would that would not be good. Yeah. Considering I can't even keep up with my wife, she, she'd beat me down. <laughs> so a bear would probably not be wise. But no, so that, uh, um, yeah, that's, how is the, the zoo coming along with getting back to normal? And, and I know you, you said that you know those were pre-COVID days. As it you know, is do you feel that like you're inching that way like towards a return to normalcy? Like you're you're you know I, I noticed we were able to get out there the other day and see a lot of the stuff and and all of that. So is it? Has it calmed down a little bit on the COVID front? Does it feel a little bit more normal at the zoo? Yeah, it is feeling a little more normal at the zoo. Um, COVID really hit us hard in yes, terms of our staffing and finances, and we had to furlough a lot of staff. Of course, we can't do that with animal care because we have mm -hmm. to keep animals going, but it is now finally feeling like it's coming back to normal, and we're really optimistic and we're pretty excited. You know, we have a lot of uh, things on the horizon that are going to be, you know, interesting and helpful, and um, we want to become a bigger resource for the community of Victoria. Um, <clears throat> so we we have a lot of things on the horizon, and we're also focusing on. Um, Generally, we provide forever homes for a lot of animals, like the bears that we just mm -hmm. talked about. Um, they're actually movie stars. They were on Jimmy Fallon show. Really? Um, just before we received those two bear cubs. But they were orphaned, and so we provide forever homes for a lot of these animals. And we also focus on endangered species. So red wolves, ocelot, uh, some other species are part of uh, a species survival plan, and it's to increase genetic diversity within the uh, managed care or other zoological institutions across the United States, and in some cases on an international level. Um, and wow. so that's an exciting role that the Texas Zoo can participate in to kind of um, further realize its, its mission. Oh, well, that's cool. So, how, roughly how many animals do you guys have out there? We have around 200. Um, it does fluctuate, but... Um, that include I, the reptiles and everything? Yep, and the birds. We have a lot of birds. Gotcha. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, no, 200 animals, though, for, for a place the size of Victoria mm -hmm. and the and detective zoo, because it's not a ginormous zoo, no. but, it, but it, it, it fits with a nice little... Mm -hmm. It's, it's like the Goldilocks effect. Like it just seems to fit <laughs> yeah. just right there in, in Riverside and um, and all that. Well, tell me, I know you guys, you know, donations and stuff are, are crucial to you mm -hmm. all, especially after COVID and the hit that that, mm -hmm. that put with, with funds and closing and all that fun stuff. Um, so tell me about, I, I know you guys have this, this deal coming up Friday and Saturday. Tell me about this. 
So we, I just mentioned red wolves. Yes, so red, red wolves are the most endangered of the canid species. So any wild dog or wolf species, they are the most endangered in the whole world. And in the wild, there's a handful of animals or a handful of red wolves in North Carolina. They used to range throughout Texas. Um, and so um, we were approached by Weiler Woods Wildlife. It's a mouthful to say. And they are, um, they do a lot of sculpting. And so they are donating a cast of a red wolf. It will be revealed on Saturday morning. But the whole intention is to kind of um, increase awareness of what they refer to as underdog species. And so a lot of people don't realize that there are red wolves. And so we're really, really lucky to have a pair of red wolves um, at the Texas Zoo. It's also our logo, which is kind of cool too. Um, and so what we're planning to do is to kind of um, increase that awareness within the community of Victoria through social media and things of that nature. And we're holding two events. One will be uh, Friday evening. It's an adult only event. I'm it's, okay with those. I've got a son now and I love him to death, but it also makes me value adult time. So yeah. I'm, I get that. So <laughs> Friday, go ahead. Sorry. No, it's okay. So from six to eight, um, you can come in. It's BYOB. Okay. It's $40 a person or $70 for a couple. And when you arrive at the zoo, um, you will be handed a, a canvas with a little sketch of a red wolf. And there's tables throughout the zoo, and you can sit, and we provide the paint and all the materials that you need. Um, and it's just a really laid back, casual event. And we have, um, you know, the animals will be out, so you can see the animals. And, you know, it's just a different uh, feeling or atmosphere within the zoo. So, and then the next morning, um, around 10.30, we start, we're gonna do the grand reveal. So. We have a beautiful display where the cast will be, and we will, um, like I said, reveal, reveal to all the to the people that come to the zoo, and then the artist um, will be available in our Wildlife Encounters building, which is kind of the main building, um, and people can have the opportunity to chat with them and see the work that they do. And if you're interested in sponsoring our wolves, we have a wolf sponsorship that you can um, purchase, and we get a little plushy wolf. And we have other uh, things also that will be available, but mainly focusing on red wolves. Gotcha, gotcha. So how can, do they, can they just show up or do they need to go on? How do they, um, do you want them to register in advance or how does that work if so they want to participate in this event? For the evening event, I would go onto the zoo's website, which is www.texaszoo.org. Okay. Or you can call the zoo at uh, 361 Five seven three seven six eight one, um, and you can get tickets for the um, evening event, which is uh, paint for a cause. And then on the following Saturday morning, you can just show up, and if you're a member, you're free, or you can purchase a ticket to um, come into the zoo. And for the Meet the Artist, um, which is going to be from 11 a.m. until 1 p.m., we'll have kind of light finger food available and make it a nice casual atmosphere so people can kind of get to know uh, the artists are traveling all the way here from North Carolina, so that's a big deal for us. How and exciting, how exciting. Well, thank you so much. I, I think this is a neat thing that we have, and I, I encourage you all to make sure you go out and, and, and support our Texas Zoo. You know, this thing is important, but without kind donations like you, without participating in these events, without going and taking your family to see these animals and, and have these interactions, you know, we could end up losing these type of things. So make sure you get out and support them. Shake their hands. Tell them thank you. Ask what you can do. Do you all take volunteers? We do take volunteers, They do yes. take volunteers. Mm -hmm. So, um, guys, go be a part of this. Reach out. This, again, is Friday and Saturday. Cool deal. Um, I bet most of y'all hadn't seen a red wolf, so go see a red <laughs> wolf. That's that's just super cool. Um, am I forgetting anything, boss lady? No, nope, but thank no? you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you so much for coming. We will take a, uh, take a quick break, a final word from a sponsor, and be back with our last guest. guys welcome back we are with our final guest thanks so much for for tuning in and, and following us along i'm excited for this one i think i get excited for everything i know i say that but i i'm <laughs> genuine i mean it um but this is neat this is something outside normal event type things this is something that is is for your marriage which i you know 
a marriage is something you have to work at all the time. And, and, and some days I'm better at that than others. Luckily, I have a very gracious and, and, and kind wife that forgives me and all my boneheaded things that I do all the time. Um, and just, you know, I've been very, very, very blessed. And so thank you, Tiffany, for being a wonderful wife. Um, but that was a plug. I, yeah, I, I had to, you know, she, I'm drinking the coffee she made for me. I'm here because she took care of my stuff. And, and I'm just, I'm a very, very blessed man. And so when you asked about this, I was excited to hear it because I, the older I get and the more, the longer I'm in my marriage, the more I, I know I need to work on it. Not because yeah. it's, it's something bad, but because it's something special and it's something to be protected and, it, and it's something that does require that time. And, mm-hmm. and I just got lucky and hit the jackpot and, and had a wife that's stuck with me through all these years of maturing and growing and finally starting to be smart enough to understand the, the gift of, of, a, of a wonderful wife and a marriage that I've been given, you know. And so I, I'm very excited to hear this. And so without that, I'm skipping all the way ahead. Yeah. Tell everybody who you are and then we'll get into why you're here. Okay. Uh, my name is Sheree Brissett, and um, I'm the chaplain for the American Legion. And so I, you know, I'm, I'm retired military, and so that's how I became the chaplain of the American Legion. And God, um, he sent me to school after I retired, and I got my master's from ORU in Christian ministry. And I kind of wondered why God was, you know, sending me in that direction. I have always had God in my heart, but um, when I finished, I was like, you know, okay, God, what do you want me? What do you have for me to do with this? You know, what are, what are you, what are you doing? And so, God has put this on my heart, and um, He wanted me to do this marriage reset. And I said, oh, God, what marriage? Why, why would you want me to do something with marriage? And um, I've been married multiple times. Why would anyone listen to me about marriage? And my answer came in prayer, um, because you've seen what brokenness does to families. You've seen what brokenness looks like. Um, I've seen the brokenness in my children. Um, My mom and dad have been married for 51 years this year. And um, when I grew up, I never saw the ugliness in marriage. I never saw my parents fight. I saw love. I saw my mom scoot over next to my mom and dad and it was beautiful. It was absolutely beautiful. But what I what I didn't learn growing up was that found the foundations that God created were already, you know, being broken down in other families in the world. And so, you know, as my family moved around, um, my dad was a pipe welder, and so we moved a lot. And so as um, I was a you know, teenager and growing up, um, I met a, you know, an army guy and, you know, and that's where my romantic marriage began. So with, you know, my story is long and we won't go into my, my testimony right now. Part of my testimony is going to be told at this marriage reset, but with that, um, with that, these these foundations that God created, um, because they're being broken down, our society suffers because our families suffer, 
And because the foundation of our family and, our, and the foundation of marriage is broken, and uh, our society suffers, our communities suffer, our, our world is suffering because people are hurt and people hurt each other. Um, so we need to, so God just told me, you know, he's like, we have to work on marriage and we have to work on that foundation. And um, because I have seen what it looks like and, and the pain that's in it. So with that being said, <laughs> and they, they, keep, all right, keep going. Talk to me. Talk to me. With that being said, this marriage reset is going to be fun. It's going to be filled with fun, but it's going to be filled with wisdom and insight. And um, I have some amazing um, speakers coming. I have a speaker from Houston. Her name is Sandra Serta. And she has been through um, some experiences herself that she's going to share. She's um, she's an ordained minister from the late um, John Osteen, and um, she's coming. She's she's a author, a publisher, a filmmaker, and she's going to share thirty three years of experience. She she's um, she's going to be here to share with us. Um, Journey, our local church, Journey's um, very own worship director, um, Ethan um, Simchek, is going to uh, share music with us. And I'm really excited about him coming and sharing that with us. I'm an Ethan fan. I like Ethan. Yeah. The guy's pretty solid. Yeah. I like him. Yeah. Um, we have. Um, we have from our local church, um, Authentic. We have uh, Pastor Kyle Howe. He's going to come out and share um, his. He's got a master's degree in ministry, and he's pursuing another one in religion. He's going to uh, share with us. Um, some That's a great guy, too. And he's got a book coming out as well. And, yep. and, and he is solid as a common. Yep. So, yeah, I, I, I really like Kyle. Uh, do you, you're on a, on a roll right now. Right? I know. You're know. on a roll. Kyle so, is a man. I like him. So he's going to share with us um, some things. We've got uh, Pastor Laramie Gilden from Community Baptist, another local church. He's going to come and, and share some uh, some some stuff with the guys because we're going to have breakout uh, a breakout group where the guys and the girls break up and um, he's taking the guys and he's doing something special with them and I'm taking the girls and I'm doing something special with them and uh, then uh, also we're going to have uh, we're going to have a, a doctor come in he, she's a nutritionist because here's the thing, we're foundation for, um, because marriage is the foundation, right? It's not just spiritual, and but it's also physical. Because everything that is foundational has to do with you as a complete person. So... Um, we want to we want to work on our spiritual, our physical, our mental, everything together. Um, because if you don't feel good, um, I mean, all of it's part of it. And so, we want to work on that. We have local chiropractor um, Betsy um, from New Life Chiropractic. Mm -hmm. um, Betsy Boudreaux is coming. We have uh, a local pastor that's um, starting a new church uh, called One Church. Uh, Jason Garvel is coming. Oh, I know Jason and his wife, Amy. Uh-huh. Yep. And we have uh, Liberty Coffee is um, donating all the coffee. Outstanding. We also have uh, Chick-fil-A is donating all of, uh, well, Chick-fil-A is donating lunch for, um, for us on Saturday. And so it, it's going to be a good time. We're going to have um, lots of insight, lots of um, wisdom, and 
you know, I just think that if we learn to communicate better and love on each other and build the foundation, um, working together through things that uh, lives, lives, our lives can be so much better for our children, for our families, for our future. Nobody outside those doors is going to take care of you like your spouse is, mm -hmm. you know, and, and God set that up that way for a reason. And, and again, the, I found that when I lead my home like I'm supposed to as a man in my home, mm -hmm. that, that there's order in my home and that things go well. But when I'm not leading like the man that I should or a man of God or, or then that peace isn't in my home the way it should be. And I've got a, a spectacular wife that will follow that and, and wants me to lead as a Christian man of our home. And, and, and a, again, guys, you know, we just turn this into a little mini Bible session here. But the, the, the point is, is, is I think God designed marriage for a reason. And, and I think that what you're doing is just absolutely spectacular. And I would encourage everybody, how, how can they, you know, how can people sign up for this and, and how can they be a part of it and, and, and how do the, how do we uh, put this out in front um, of people? So also, I mean, I'm, I'm trying to get um, resources to be there at, um, to sign up to be there for um, at the end so that people, um, when we have all of this done, that they can sign up for stuff like financial counseling. So any resources in the area for like financial counseling, addictions, um, anything, any resources that Victoria has. If they want to contact me at charade.brissette at gmail.com um, and sign up to be here, it's, it's at, at American Legion on this day, it's free if you just want to sign up to be here for um, the couples. Is so there a Facebook event for this? It, it is on Eventbrite. Gotcha. I, and, and it's Truth in Your Marriage. You search gotcha. the Truth in Your Marriage at in, in Eventbrite. Gotcha. And so we want to have resources at the end so for people to sign up if they need help, um, you know, mentally or physically or, you know, we'll have the nutritionist there to sign up for that. Well, um, I'm looking for, you know, um, fi any kind of financial counselors that will, you know, have them, you know, just for local resources to help these couples out so that they don't have to try to find these resources in Victoria. So if anyone would, you know, any of those resources, if they want to contact me so that they can sign up to be there at, um, at the American Legion on the 14th of August. Gotcha. Okay. Gotcha. Well, thank you so much. Um, again, we'll have the uh, um, August. Wait, I mean, where's your cheat sheet here? August 4th. Give me the dates. I was going to steal from you. There we go. Um, Friday, August uh, 13th and Saturday, August 14th. Again, <laughs> get with her. We'll have the information on here. You'll see it. It'll be posted down below as well. This is a great thing. Guys, invest in your marriage. I promise you, you put that work in, in your marriage, it will pay off. Everything is just a little bit better when you and your spouse are on the same page getting along and life is good and you will find that you can conquer the world if you have your spouse in your corner and encourage your spouse as well. Um, we also have a, like three hundred dollar, um, three one hundred dollar gifts that will be given out. We have a couple um, fifty dollar gift certificates that we'll give out. We'll have three three sets of books that will be given out lots of stuff and so I'm so excited. Gotcha. So work on your marriage, possibly win some stuff. Um, yeah, what a great thing. Thank you so much and, so and thank you for coming on and uh, guys, we ran along this episode. We had a lot to talk about but thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you for being part of stuff and we'll see you at the next one. Thanks so much for tuning in to Victoria Events with Caleb Shaw. Make sure you comment down below, like the post, share the post. It really helps the algorithm. If you haven't done so already, make sure you follow our page. If you're watching on YouTube, subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss any episodes. And if you have an event coming on you want featured on Victoria Events, shoot us a message. We'd love to help you get the word out there. Lastly, make sure you support our sponsors. We could not do this show without them, so we're very grateful. Thanks so much, Victoria, and we'll see you at the next one.